Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. Now out here, this is a treat for you all. Mission Impossible, yeah, Mission Viejo Country Club. And we're playing all the way back, we're playing the tips. It's the hardest golf course in all of Orange County. We're gonna give it a go. Hey, this is the front nine. I played teed off on 10, so if you haven't caught the back, go ahead and check that out first if you wanna see my whole round in chronological order. Otherwise, we'll see you out there on the first hole, a long par five. Here we go. Now, starting off the back of the beautiful clubhouse here, the first hole snakes right in between the ninth and 18th holes. And man, is it a narrow par five to start your day. This riverbed is going to completely come into play, maybe off the tee, but definitely on your second shot as it parallels the fairway all the way down to the green. But luckily, the fairway does cant a little bit over to the right and away from the hazard. Dealing with those bunkers is going to be the main difficulty coming into the green as they are very deep and that front one is deceiving as it's about 30 yards short of this green. Now, most of the bag has been working for me today, especially this driver. A big high cut off the tee, and we're down the first hole with not much trouble in front of us here. A smooth five iron. The wind was starting to pick up, and I was going to have to add a little bit of distance as we were coming straight into that ocean breeze. Landed this five iron pin high off to the right hand side, and there was plenty of room to miss over here on the right hand side. Just a little pitch over the bunker and I was able to live myself 15 to 20 feet here for birdie. And these are slippery, slippery greens where you do not want to be above the hole. Now, if that ball would have missed, it would have gone another 5 to 10 feet past the hole, but it didn't. It's in the cup. A nice birdie to start the back nine. Well, it's my back nine. It's certainly the front nine here on the card. Now, this second hole is awesome. It is very narrow off the tee. Use that bunker down the fairway as your target off the tee. Just make sure you don't have enough stick to get it in. Once we head past the bunker, the drone really makes it deceiving as it's really high up here. The fairway drops down significantly towards this green. So it's a bit of a plateau fairway dropping down into this green, heavily protected by those two bunkers and the freeway long. Now I tried to turn this drive over and slightly around the corner and that was a no go. This ball ended up rolling down the cart path and trundling on down the left side of the cart path here onto this mulch area in between the second and third holes. I was just lucky enough to be able to get some sort of shot on it, chipped it down the fairway here, and had about 75 yards to the flag stick. And to be honest, we're just trying to limit the damage. We're coming off of a birdie, so we do have effectively a shot to play with. And here, there's no doubles. I don't want a single double on my card. So up and down for par would have been ideal, but I just couldn't get that 40 footer to drop. Now the third hole, the first par three on the card. I love the way the tee box is cut into the lake with those sharp lines there. A very long par three at 225 yards. Luckily today we have the wind behind us. Gonna give me about 15 yards worth of help. But all the way to that back hole location, it's a long way. Now, my 5-iron typically goes about 215 to 220. I was hoping it would go 230 into the middle of the green, but it just barely caught the front edge. You can see with the flag there, there was plenty of breeze behind me to help push this ball all the way to the flag. I just couldn't quite get that distance right. Here, 7 feet for par is not what I like to see, and I just came out of that putt instantaneously. I was not a happy camper coming down with that long first putt. I should have gotten that thing a lot closer. Now here, the fourth hole is an awesome par four. Rated the number one handicap, I would venture a guess that is correct if you were to play here time and time again. But one time over, you can kind of throw those handicap numbers out the window. 
a very difficult drive here. Straight back into the wind and curving to the left. You're going to have to give it all you got and get it all the way around the corner to give yourself a shot. This green is perched high above the fairway, and it's well over that ravine. So hopefully that ravine won't come into play for you. You can see the ridge running through the middle of the green there. It's a clear two-tier green. Again, I tried to turn this drive over even though I was hitting a fade all day and ended up losing it just a little bit to the right. Those fairway bunkers catch almost anything over here and that's where I decided to land. The trick with these fairway bunkers is to ensure you can get enough club on the ball to get it up over those high lips. I just couldn't quite get enough club on it to get it all the way to this green. But landing it just short of this green, I expected my short game to help me get this up and down. But man, here's another cardinal sin, leaving it above the hole. This was a slippery par putt. After that beautiful par save, we're heading on up the hill here to the top of the crest. The fifth hole par four is going to play right along the top of the crest, climbing all the way towards the green. One of the tighter tee shots you're going to see on the entire golf course. That bunker left is nowhere you want to be as you're not going to be able to have any shot to the green out of it. Try to leave your tee shot short of this second bunker on the left-hand side. You're going to have a blind approach to this green, and that bunker is only protecting the back half, specifically right where our hole location is today. Now another smooth four iron off the tee for me. That's my 235 club trying to put it right in the middle of the fairway. And here a smooth seven iron as the wind was at my back and climbing the hill, I expected the wind and the hill to effectively counteract each other. And this perfect seven iron went pin high to the right. I could not place this any better on the green and have another birdie look. A very unexpected birdie on that difficult par four as we head to the very last par three of my day. The second here on the front nine is quite possibly the most gorgeous on the entire golf course. Number six here plays 213 yards all the way down the hill. That would play about 195 yards with the hill adjusted. Now this was tricky as it was all the way down the hill but straight back into the wind. Hopefully I was able to counteract that perfectly and I judged this pretty good and just barely tugged it left. Here in the green sign bunkers there are soft lies but this green was running all the way away from me. I was thankful to hit a perfect bunker shot here to three feet having a great look for par to validate the birdie, but that's just golf. Another bogey drops me back to two over par. That's one over par here on this nine holes. Four, five, four to close this one off. These are some strong holes coming home. A long par four here. It's going to be downhill off the tee. Avoid those two bunkers on the hill on the right. And you're going to have plenty of fairway over on the left hand side. But of course, the farther over to the left you go, the more water is going to come into play for your second shot. But hopefully this front hole location will take a lot of that trouble out of play as you shouldn't have enough club to get there. Finally was able to straighten a shot out. I remembered that it's finally going to a little bit to the right, so I aimed on the left and let it go. This one flew all the way over that fairway bunker, and I was here in some very soft turf just next to the drain here. Just kind of had to chunk it out of the fairway line. That was very funky. Had no spin on the ball at all, and it ran all the way out to the back of the green. 
and this long feeder birdie putt is all about the speed. You just got to cozy these ones down there to give yourself a look at the pars. I haven't really had very many comfy ones today, but it is nice to be able to roll in those three to four footers time and time again. It's time for the last par five of the front nine and the last par five of my day. The eighth hole is a straight shot runway par five. Bunkers down the right, hidden there in the shadows as you can see them, are very reachable off the tee for nearly everyone. And don't be deceived, that river down the left will absolutely come into play off the tee. And coming into the green, well, there's really no bunkers protecting your layup shot. But of course, there's going to be some sort of trouble down here with that lake. And with the green wrapping all the way around the backside, you know it's going to come into play for absolutely everybody, whether you're going for it in two or three or more. Another drive right down Main Street on this beautiful evening, and it reminds me here, playing at twilight is one of my favorite times to play golf. Comment down below, what's your favorite time of day to play? Beginning of the day, maybe the middle and take up the whole day? The end of it here and just barely get in before the end? Any time is a good time to play golf in my opinion. Unless you have this sort of a lie here next to the cart path where you just barely are able to get a club on it. But off that downhill lie, I had to play something creative. Just a little bump and run through the fringe here. I was happy to keep it on the green. And another 20 footer for birdie. It was makeable, but I just didn't hit the pot. And it's just our first comfy tap in par of this front nine. And we're down to the last hole of the day. The ninth hole here is a gorgeous finishing hole. Having started off on the 10th tee, this is just as good of a finish as the back nine. The ninth hole is going to be an uphill long par four climbing all the way from the tee to the green. Those bunkers should serve as your aiming point off the tee, knowing there's plenty of fairway off to the right to play with. And as we come into the green, it's going to be severely up the hill, blind to absolutely everybody and well protected, especially with this devilish back hole location. Another soft cut off the left hand side. I just was not able to get this one to bleed enough and it just trickled into the fairway bunker. The ball was sitting above my feet here, causing it to go severely to the left. There was really nothing I could do about it here. And I did catch it a little bit heavy as well. So it was a good 40 yards short of the green. I had to play a pitch up and over the lip of the bunker and another 20 foot par putt to close out the day. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Please subscribe, like the video, and we will see you next time. Later.